Hey everybody, welcome back to World War II Submarine History with Haiku. Today's briefing is on U-boat crew composition and watch standing. Book references. Neither Sharks Nor Wolves by Timothy P. Mulligan and U-boat commanders and crews 1935 to 1945 by Jack P. Malman Showell. Our online references are uboat.net and uboatarchive.net. So maybe you've seen, so maybe you've seen Das Boat or you've played Silent Hunter 3. Maybe you have some questions about who all these people are either in the movie or in the game. And here's an example. This is a screenshot from Silent Hunter 3 when you're in port. Um, you actually have some crew man resource management functions and uh, you're actually able to select your crew and optimize them for the patrol or mission you intend on doing. But the game doesn't really give you a lot of information about who does what or why. So our, for our purposes today, we're going to focus on the Type 2 U-boat. Uh, because the crew size is small and it's easier to understand. But this organization applies to U-boats and crews for all the different types. So first up, we have the captain, who on a U-boat would be identified by the white cap. He's overall in command. He conducts submerged attacks with assistance from the first officer, and he has no assigned sea watch because when you're captain of, captain of a boat, actually when you're captain of anything, you're basically always on duty. You have a first officer who's second in command of the boat. He conducts surface attacks with assistance from the captain. He's also the weapons officer uh, responsible for managing torpedoes and fire control systems, and he leads the first sea watch. Second officer, he's the communications officer on the boat, and in particular, he's responsible for the Enigma machine and deciphering encrypted messages. He's also, also the supply officer, and he has a role in administration. Uh, collateral duty, he's responsible for the deck gun and flak, ammunition, management, training, and he leads the second sea watch. The engineering officer, he's overall in charge of propulsion and, and the physical systems related to diving and underwater control. Like the captain, he has no assigned sea watch. He's always on duty. Um, he's actually... <laughs> if you had to lose either your captain or your engineering officer, you'd probably want to lose your captain. Because the engineering officer, they're like on their own separate career track in, uh, in the German Navy. And they spend their entire careers involved in propulsion systems. So they have a lot of knowledge. Oftentimes, they are in the shipyards while, the -boat is, while their U-boat is being built. And that is to afford that engineering officer time to understand the construction of the boat it's and to gain an appreciation and understanding for all its systems. So moving on to what here in the United States we would probably refer to as warrant officers. I think this is a really kind of muddled subject on the German Navy and I can't say that I really have um, a really solid knowledge of their ranks, promotion, and career tracks. But from what I can get from the information available, uh, your navigator is what we would consider a warrant officer. And he's responsible for navigation, and he also works with the second officer regarding supplies. He leads the third sea watch. Chief Bosun's mate, or the chief of the boats, uh, he's a warrant officer. He's responsible for the seamen's division. We'll get into that in a moment. And during combat, he feeds data into the torpedo data computer. Chief Diesel Mechanic, he's a warrant officer. He reports directly to the engineering officer. 
and he's responsible for the operation and maintenance of the diesel engines and, the, and their related systems. There's also a chief e-motor mechanic uh, who's a warrant officer. He's parallel with the chief diesel mechanic. He reports to the engineering officer and he's responsible for the operation and maintenance of the electric motors, batteries, and those related systems. Now, there's no picture here because I've been, you know, I've been using the, I've been using images from the move from the movie Das Boat, and in and in that movie, you never see the chief e motor mechanic, and I think that was something convenient they they did for the purposes of the script, to kind of like uh, consolidate those two positions into one, just for the purposes of the movie. But they were separate positions on an actual boat. Chief radio sonar operator, warrant officer, probably on a larger boat. On a smaller boat, he could be a senior chief, what we would consider to be a senior chief petty officer. He reports to the second officer, uh, and he's overall and responsible for the operation of the radios, radio direction finders, hydrophones, sonar systems. But most important of all, he has the gramophone. <laughs> And on German submarines, uh, playing records was a really big deal, in particular, American jazz. So you could have other people on a U-boat. Uh, you could have correspondents, you could have cadets, you could have intelligent people, excuse me, intelligence people, medical officers and others um, that could be part of the crew for a specific patrol, but they wouldn't be routine, routinely assigned. So if you want to pause the uh, briefing here so you can take a look at that, feel free. But for the Type 2 German submarine, this is kind of how it all breaks down. Um, your commission officers are like in that blue-gray. Your warrant officers are chief petty officers. And your petty officers are like in that light orange. And then at the bottom, we have the slots for the enlisted. And you can see on the left side, we have our Siemens division um, where we have people who are focused on weapon systems and operation of the boat itself. And on the right hand side, we have like all these technical specialties that are doing different things so that the boat can do its mission. And to kind of bring it home, here's another screenshot in game from Silent Hunter 3. When you're in game in the lower right hand corner, you have that panel with these different icons of, of these different figures who play into the, you know, how you, how you do the game. But, but the game doesn't really explain who and what they are. But on the left, we have our engineering officer, we have our navigator, we have our weapons officer who's really your first officer, but you wouldn't know that because the game doesn't address him as the, war, as the weapons officer. And then uh, we have our hydrophone operator, radio operator, and then when the boat is surfaced in game, you have a watch officer, which for our purposes, we're just gonna say is the second officer. Because while you did have a, you did have a watch standing routine and, and you had this you had this pattern on the U-boat, you know, as you go for day-to-day -day operations. When you're actually in combat, everybody's up out of their racks, everybody has an assigned station, and everybody is ready for combat. So within the game, I think this is kind of just how they represent it. So watch standing. So while at sea, a U-boat, or really any any boat or ship, you have to staff all the stations around the clock, seven days a week, 24 hours. There's no time off. Uh, for a U-boat, this includes a sea watch on the bridge while surfaced, which is what you're doing the vast majority of the time. So your sea watches go, it's divided into three watches. There's the first, second, and third sea watch. You can see in parentheses, the officer or the warrant officer who leads it. They're four hours. Uh, you can see how that's distributed up. So basically, everybody who has a sea watch duty, they're going to be doing a sea watch eight hours a day in two four-hour blocks. 
with time off in between so you can eat, sleep, rest, do your training or other things that need to be done around the boat. Engine room watches, uh, they operate a little bit differently. It's either a port or starboard watch, six hours per side. And then there are radio watches. Um, the radio watch is running during the day for four hours at a time, and then at night they're a little bit longer, presumably because there's less traffic. I have a little bit of a problem with this slide because if you look at it, if we're assuming like a port starboard watch, you only have five rotations, which means that you would have either the port or the starboard side could potentially be doing like a 10 hour watch, which doesn't make sense. So I'm thinking that, you know, and, and this is and this is information from a couple different books. But the people who wrote the books may not have really sat down and really thought that through. Um, one thought is that maybe at night there's only one person on. Maybe there could only be one person on watch, depending if your surface door submerged, simply because there's going to be less radio traffic. But you're doing most of your attacks at night, so that doesn't make sense either. So we can wrap it up here with a, um, this is, I don't remember which, oh, no, this is from the, uh, this is the, from the Showell book. Um, there's a section in there where he actually breaks out the manning and and disposition of, of a crew for the U-377, which was a Type 7 sea boat. This is from the fall of 1943. And you'll notice here that I actually have it in German, right, to make it a little bit more real. Um, but I've tried with the color coding, you know, your commission officers are in blue, your warrant officers or senior chief petty officers, they're kind of like in that uh, light orange. And then you can see your enlisted people in the darker orange. But you can see that a couple thing, a couple things of note here. Underneath the first watch officer, the Obersturman, that's your navigator, okay. And then on the underneath, on the right hand side, it's spelled out the light tender engineer. That's your engineering officer, and with the U three seven seven. For that particular patrol, they actually had an assistant engineering officer, not a cadet, but somebody recently commissioned, and this was them getting experience. But you'll notice on the left-hand side, at the bottom, the uh, Obermechaniker, that's your torpedo. Those, these are your torpedo people. So you have a lead petty officer, and then you have your mechanicers below him who are responsible for like torpedo maintenance, which there was a lot of. Above that, um, the Metrosin, those, those, are, those are your boats, guys. In the center, Funk is German for radio. So those are your radio hydrophone operators. Fall of 43, they have some radio direction. They have some radio, radio detection receivers at that point, they, they may have some radar as well. And then on the right hand side, your machining men are your engine related people. So that's about it for today. Um, hopefully this brief was able to give you some information, make things a little bit clearer if you're watching a movie or reading a book. Uh, I thank you for coming out. Thanks for watching and uh, feel free to leave comments below. You can send me email, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm on Discord and if you care to, you can even uh, subscribe and be a patron. Everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.